Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are in the world, welcome to another edition of Jerry's Take on China, and I'm Jerry. Today, I'm going to talk about an individual who is primarily responsible for one of the biggest lies in modern history, the Uyghur genocide. His name is Adrian Zenz. Many people believe that Zenz is an expert on Xinjiang. However, as we know from his own words, he's visited China as a tourist in 2007. It's not clear if he actually set foot into Xinjiang during that trip. He's been very vague about that. So this expert, who's employed by a right-wing US government-funded association called the Victims of Communism, explains in his papers that Xinjiang is a land of oppression, which has, according to his first count, up to 800,000 people in prisons and, by more recent counts, as many as 6 million people in concentration camps. People who know Xinjiang, even the hundreds of journalists who travel there, myself included, know there have been problems. The problems are being efficiently and safely handled by the Chinese authorities, and the region is being pulled out of poverty. People are being educated, finding work, earning income, rotating back into a society that's rapidly changing for the better. So why then is this man so wrong, and why do so many people outside of China believe him? The answer is simple. It's because he sincerely believes himself to be correct. People believe him because they want to. He's a deeply religious man who would swear on a Bible that his claims are correct. So how can this be true? It's all a matter of misinterpretation and misunderstanding. Firstly, we need to understand the man. He's a Christian fundamentalist. He believes very strongly in his God. He believes China is evil because the government here don't believe in his God. He thinks others who don't share his belief are destined to burn in hell and has even written a book about it. You can buy it if you want. It's on Amazon for £49.65, about 500 RMB. With ideas like this, it's hardly surprising he'd like to change China. He believes he can earn a place beside his God in his afterlife by doing so. But even with these crazy ideas, people in the US still believe him. Why? Zenz is a very intelligent man with a PhD from Cambridge. He spent much of the last few years making a lot of money researching China online and he's included government and government contractors' websites. He's found thousands of documents, perhaps hundreds of thousands of documents relating to Xinjiang, including purchase orders, contracts for buildings, agreements between suppliers and the government even some sensitive information, such as what security equipment has been purchased. These are all open source. He's found records of transportation and shipping contracts. He knows that millions, maybe billions of dollars of security fences, wire, security cameras, and other equipment used to keep people safe has been sent to Xinjiang. On top of this, he even knows how many beds were sent there too. Now, as far as I can ascertain, Zenz doesn't speak, read, or write Chinese. But from the information, he's made interpretations. These interpretations are influenced by a religious belief that anyone who doesn't believe in his God is evil. So the evil Communist Party of China must be locking people in compounds and making them work for no pay. What he hasn't considered is a viable alternative. Xinjiang is huge. Many people live in small farming communities. They can't travel to and from school every day. He doesn't understand the Chinese culture of living in a school because in his home country, Germany, all students go home after their class. They live with their families. He doesn't understand that the majority of workers in China are migrant workers who travel from rural areas into the cities. They work in large factories. He's probably never seen a factory with 10,000 workers living in dormitories. These are completely unknown to him. So if a factory has many small rooms, many beds, it must be a prison, because this is the only experience he has. He can't comprehend that factories in China have gatehouses and fences. Schools have high walls, barbed wire. They have policemen outside, which keep the students safe, not keep prisoners in. He's never been, so he's never asked the people if they want to be there, he assumes they don't. He's never asked the people if they can go home, he assumes they can't. And he's never asked the people there if they are allowed religious freedom. He believes they aren't. The USA, where he now lives, has the highest prison population in the world. In fact, 25% of all the people in prison globally are in prison in the USA. 
So when an American or a German living there sees a building secure enough to keep terrorists or extremists out, they assume it's a prison to keep people in. This is a logical thought from the USA. High security buildings, they must be prisons. In America, almost anyone can legally carry a gun. American people might say, I don't want security checks. I, I have my guns, I can look after myself. Chinese people are different. They don't want or need guns to protect themselves because their government does through appropriate security measures. Americans can't understand this, nor it seems can Germans who live in America. As a result, in the USA up to May this year, there were 119 incidents of guns being fired in schools. As we know recently, several children have been killed. Zenz isn't lying. He has indeed seen many things which could be interpreted as sinister, but equally as beneficial. The only way for him to find out the truth is to go there and see for himself. But if he did that, his entire reason for living, his income from the US government, his work to destroy China would be wasted. So obviously, he prefers his own version of the truth. Now, if you have anything to add or any comments you want to make, please feel free to leave them and I will do my best to answer any questions and get back to you. Thanks very much for watching. See you next time.